space is truly unlimited. With so many possibilities for advancements, it is truly fascinating whenever anything is discovered. You never know what small finding will lead to something big, and what big findings will be revolutionary. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at recent space discoveries. Scientists think they have detected radio emissions from an exoplanet. Searching for and investigating found exoplanets is becoming an increasingly prominent aspect of astronomical research. Exoplanets are planets that, just like those in our solar system, orbit a star, though they orbit a star other than our Sun and lie a little further away. Scientists believe that if they find an exoplanet like Earth, not only will we be able to confirm that we do indeed understand the processes of formation and interaction within and across planets, but we might go one step further and find habitable environments and other life forms. All the research conducted is invaluable. So far, the search for exoplanets has been led by TESS, NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, which has found more than 4,500 potential exoplanets, referred to as candidate exoplanets. Scientists then follow up, and from this, 159 exoplanets that were found by TESS have been confirmed. Now, new research is on its way to try and alleviate some of TESS's pressures, delving further into exoplanet research. In the Netherlands, a research team has used a radio telescope to examine three of the stars we know are orbited by exoplanets, also known as host stars. The team has compared their observations of host stars to observations of Jupiter when they reframed to look as though it were seen from a star system plenty of light years away. From these observations, there was one star system. Tau Bortes, that was the most notable in result. We have confirmed there is one exoplanet in Tau Bortes already, though this does not mean there aren't more awaiting discovery. Researchers have seen from this star system that there are ways to detect exoplanets through radio waves for the first time. If this proves to be successful and accurate, then there is the potential to understand the impact of magnetic fields in exoplanets and, by extension, understand more about exoplanets themselves. Jake Turner, an astronomer at Cornell University and lead author of the research project, said, We present one of the first hints of detecting an exoplanet in the radio realm. He continues to explain that their current hypothesis is that the radio emissions were coming from the planet itself, not any other nearby celestial objects. He explains that to have come to this conclusion, the team had considered the strength and polarization of the radio signal and the planet's magnetic field, and that all these measurements fall in line with theoretical predictions. Despite this being the current theory, the team cannot be sure of the source of the radio wave just yet. More research, more observations, and more data is necessary to determine if the team's hypothesis is indeed true. The planet, named Tau Bortes b, is in the Tau Bortes star system and can be found in, you guessed it, the Bortes constellation when viewed from Earth. So, the new wave of research kicked off, starting from Jupiter. The team began by measuring the radio emissions from the gas giant in our own solar system and then adjusted the measurements based on distance from the host star and the distance from Earth to make the same template fit the measurements for Tau Bortes b, the exoplanet in question. The team were not done here. The researchers employed the low-frequency array in the Netherlands to combine the data with that of the possible signal from Tau Bortes b. Researchers have used this to see if other signals have come through too. Blofar managed to trace the possible Tau Bortes b signal, but also several from nearby stars. It's important that we aim to understand what we can about the radio waves on exoplanets. We know that magnetic fields can play a role in the forming of conditions on the planet, such as Earth's protecting the atmosphere. This is vital information, but looking directly for it is difficult at best, and so radio emissions can give us hints and tips to help crack the code with a little more ease and certainty. So, if this research team has found an exoplanet via radio emissions, not only does this mean we can employ other technologies alongside TESS, but it also means we can uncover more about the magnetic field influencing the climates and conditions of these planets. 
there is still a great deal of uncertainty and a lot more research needed. After all, it might not even be the exoplanet producing these signals as it is. Dense exoplanet GJ367b found In 2021, a study was published from an international research team announcing the discovery of a new planet, GJ367b. The exoplanet is able to orbit its star in just eight hours and has the shockingly high surface temperature of 1500 degrees centigrade. This exoplanet is one of nearly 5,000 exoplanets that we know of today. To get an idea of its size, the mass of GJ367b clocks in at half of that of the Earth's, though this exoplanet has a diameter of a little over 9,000 kilometers compared to Earth's 12,742 kilometers. A lot of the research delving into exoplanets is striving towards one rather specific goal, to find a second Earth. Even though GJ367b's scalding surface is not exactly an Earth lookalike, the research shows that scientists are able to specify the characteristics of even rather tiny planets, widening the opportunities for future planets. Co-author Dr. Vincent van Eylen from the UCL Mullard Space Science Laboratory London explained that two different methods were used to determine the size and mass of the planet, both of which were based on the light from the planet's star. One was based on looking at the small decrease in the light from the star that occurred when GJ367b passed in front of it, an analysis conducted using NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, and the other looked into the mass based on the effect the planet had on the movement of its star. Following his explanation, he said, So it's fantastic that we were able to detect this tiny motion from 31 light years away. The study was comprised of 78 researchers, led by astronomers at the Institute of Planetary Research at the German Aerospace Center. The lead author, Dr. Christine Lamb, explained that from the radius and mass of this planet, we can tell that it is a rocky planet, meaning it joins the ranking as a sub-Earth-sized terrestrial planet. One of the most significant differences between this exoplanet and Earth is the short time to orbit its star. It takes 365 days for Earth to orbit the Sun. In comparison, one year on GJ36b is just eight hours long. This places the newly found exoplanet in the ultra-short period group of planets, those whose orbits are less than 24 hours long. All this information combined could help to give us some sort of clue into the formation and evolution history of the exoplanet. The other distinctive feature of GJ367b is the temperature. Being in such close contact to its star, it receives an extreme level of radiation, more than 500 times that of Earth's. It is exciting to see what else lies beyond Earth, and the possibility of finding a second Earth seems to be not too far into the future. New discoveries are constantly being made across a number of fields. They tell us more about the past and the future, helping us better understand our present. Earth's core is growing lopsided, and scientists don't know why. From far away, Earth looks pretty symmetrical. And although our home planet might spin on a little bit of a tilt, you would be hard-pressed to find anyone who thinks the Earth was shaped weirdly. But scientists now understand that our planet's core is growing lopsided, and they are not entirely sure why. The discovery comes after data revealed that the Earth's core is losing heat in greater amounts under Indonesia than Brazil, and this is having effects on the seismic waves passing through the core. Seismic waves and tremors made by earthquakes are the only way scientists can really see the Earth's core, and what scientists can identify is that waves passing across the equator move much slower than those across the poles. This has been known about for decades, in fact it is called seismic anisotropy, but now researchers believe that a recent study shows that the core's lopsidedness is the culprit. According to the report, every year the Earth's core grows slightly more lopsided, meaning that its iron crystal forms faster on its eastern side than its west. The movement of liquid iron in the outer core carries heat away from the inner core, causing it to freeze, lead study author Daniel Frost said. 
So this means that the outer core has been taking more heat from the east side under Indonesia than the west under Brazil. One image to use to visualize this odd growth is that of a tree trunk. The rings of the tree grow from a central point, but it is rare that the central point is actually in the center of the tree. This results in one side growing faster than the other. If you were to cut the earth in half, you might see a similar thing. Still, scientists were keen to point out that the asymmetric growth does not mean the earth's inner core is strangely shaped, and it does not mean there is any risk of imbalance. NASA rockets sent to assess Alpha Centauri NASA sent two rockets into space meant to conduct experiments and tests to see whether the stars of the solar system Alpha Centauri and their UV light are of any danger to the planets around them. They hoped that this research will provide insight into how normal or abnormal our Sun is in the scheme of ordinary solar systems. It will also help us to see whether there are changes of potential life on the planets of Alpha Centauri, or whether the UV light deletes any opportunity for life. The solar system lies only 4.3 light years away and is one of the closest systems near us. Two stars reside in the system, Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B. The two are binary suns. There is a third star called Proxima Centauri, but it is thought there are no planets orbiting these stars. We don't know this for certain, however. UV light, as we understand it, is required to build life. It breaks up molecules and allows them to reform into improved, complex molecules that allow life to grow. Too much of it makes water vapor dissolve and can go as far as to strip planets' atmospheres. Mars is an example of this since it lacks a magnetic field to protect it from the Sun's radioactive UV rays. According to astrophysicist Brian Fleming from the University of Colorado, understanding ultraviolet radiation is extremely important to understanding what makes a planet habitable. Fleming is the primary researcher for the investigation JUICE, or the Dual Channel Extreme Ultraviolet Continuum Experiment, as well as the Cysteine or Suborbital Imaging Spectrograph for Transition Region Irradiance from nearby exoplanet host stars. The Cysteine rocket was the first to be launched with JUICE, following a few days later from Australia's Arnhem Space Centre. This space centre is privately owned and has launched NASA's X-ray quantum calorimeter prior to these rockets. Alpha Centauri is only visible from the Southern Hemisphere, making Australia the best place to launch as the solar system lies in the height of Australia's skies. Cysteine and JUICE work hand-in-hand, hand, as Cysteine collects ultraviolet wavelength data at longer distances, whereas JUICE is made to collect data of close-up ultraviolet light. This ensures that the data is accurate and thorough, and that nothing escapes the research. Scientists struggle with observing stars due to the Earth's magnetic field, which blocks UV light to protect our planet. This means that sending telescopes into space directly is the most effective way to obtain data. Kevin France, who is another astrophysicist from the University of Colorado, notes that looking at Alpha Centauri will help us check if other stars like the Sun have the same radiation environment or if there are a range of environments. Jupiter's Mysterious Energy Crisis We are not the only planet in the solar system that has its share of energy crises. But a recent report shows that we might have discovered the reason for Jupiter's strange source of energy. For the last half a century, our gas giant neighbor Jupiter has an odd quirk about its temperature. However, new research may have an answer. To those not in the know, Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. Strangely, although it is much further away, more than five astronomical units from the Sun than most other planets, it is surprisingly warm. Because of this great distance, scientists would expect that the lack of sunlight would result in a very cold and frozen environment, somewhere around minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And yet, Jupiter's average temperature in its upper atmosphere is a boiling 800 degrees Fahrenheit. That nearly rivals Venus's roasting surface temperature. This odd energy quirk might have an answer, however. Scientists now believe that this so-called energy crisis is the result of intense auroras. 
These auroras are born from Jupiter's strong magnetic field, and they are ultimately affecting the planet's temperature. NASA's Juno spacecraft was partly responsible for this latest conclusion about Jupiter. Juno is currently orbiting Jupiter and is passing through the planet's radiation field in order to study it in the greatest detail in astronomical history. We have auroras on Earth as well, but they are not uncommon in the solar system. Any planet with a significant magnetic field shows aurora behavior. For example, Mars and Venus have their own versions of auroras, not just Jupiter and Earth. Auroras are created when particles with electrical charges become unable to leave the magnetic field of the planet. From there they travel towards the planet's poles, hitting atoms and molecules within the atmosphere, which creates the famous light show as seen in the Northern Lights. The researchers who have come to this conclusion seem to have gotten lucky when it comes to understanding the biggest planet in our system. James O'Donoghue, who is a planetary space scientist at JAXA's Institute of Space and Astronautical Science, said, It was pure luck that we captured this potential heat-shedding event. If we'd observed Jupiter on a different night, when the solar wind pressure had not recently been high, we would have missed it. Unfortunately, like many discoveries, the scientists now have even more questions about the heating on Jupiter. Dr. Tom Stallard, a co-author of the paper, said, We also revealed a strange, localized region of heating well away from the aurora, a long bar of heating unlike anything we've seen before. Though we can't be sure what this feature is, I am convinced it's a rolling wave of heat flowing equatorward from the aurora. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.